third speaker for today is Mr. Mohamed Abdi Dar, the international representative of Somaliland. Somaliland is an unrecognized yet de facto independent state. It declared its independence after the ousting of Somali dictator Siad Bar. As an unrecognized state, Somaliland cannot appeal for foreign aid or international support, yet in its 13 years of independence, it has formed a system of basic public administration, public and private infrastructure, held three elections, and welcomed thousands of new citizens. Whereas the Republic of Somaliland can control its own territory and historiography, it's non, it nonetheless does not exist as a state in the geopolitical realm. What lies at the basis of exclusion from international recognition and what are the consequences for the introduction of one's own currency, passports, etc. In the first place, you know, I want to say something about the location of the country. Uh, Somaliland is located in the Horn of Africa. Uh, as you know, the Horn of Africa is inhabited, is inhabited by Somalis. You know, the whole of the Horn of Africa. During the uh, end of the 19th century, uh, when there was a competition among the European powers, uh, UK, United Kingdom, France, Italy, all these big countries, you know, came to our area. And uh, at that time, uh, uh, Somalis uh, did not have a state, although they share a lot of uh, cultural uh, qualities, you know, like language, like they are the same people, the same culture, uh, the same religion, the same history. Uh, so uh, because of the fact that we did not have a central state, you know, this territory, uh, which is strategically located, as you see, has been uh, divided into different spheres of influence. Uh, Somaliland was, became a British British protectorate, uh, Somalia became Italian, Somalia. Uh, here uh, you have Ogaden, which were taken over by the Ethiopians, then French Somaliland, which is now Djibouti, and then the NFD, the Northern Frontier District of Kenya, which, was, which came under the protection of the, of the British. So for nearly 100 years, uh, we have to go under different uh, experiences of uh, uh, colonial administration. But in 1960, uh, when uh, Somaliland became independent you know, from uh, Great Britain, and Italy also granted uh, independence you know, to Somalia, the two territories merged. It was a voluntary merger. And in fact, the initiative was taken by Somaliland, Somalilanders. Because at that time, we were thinking of bringing all the Somalis together. Those in Ogadenia, those in Somalia, those in Elfdi, those in Djibouti, Somaliland, together to form you know, the nation of uh, the Somali nation. Uh, so the two territories, you know, merged. Uh, unfortunately, uh, despite these sacrifices which Somaliland made, uh, the union which we established between the two countries did not work. After five, six, seven years, uh, we had a dictatorship uh, there were violations of massive violations of human rights, a lot of massacres, a lot of, uh, and people uh, suffered. And uh, all this uh, documented, you know, by the Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and all these, you know, organizations. And, and then a civil war erupted after the uh, disintegration of the Somali Republic in 1991 and it spread all over this territory. At that stage, in 19, the beginning of 1991, 
the elders of Somaliland and the politicians, together with the people, with the participation of the people, decided to revoke the union with Somalia and to reestablish Somaliland within the boundaries which were demarcated by the British at the end of the 19th century when they came to that area. So since then, uh, we started rebuilding you know, the territory because during the Civil War, there was so much destruction by the former uh, 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 regime. All the cities were destroyed. Nearly a million people came as refugees you know, to Ethiopia and to other parts of East Africa. And uh, there was so much destruction. Uh, when our leaders you know, reestablished peace among the uh, people, uh, uh, people started coming back from the refugee camps and took part in the process of rebuilding you know, the territory, the country. We have been successful to rebuild also not only the infrastructure and the buildings and so forth, the industries, but to also establish a democratic system of government. We put up a parliament consisting of two houses of parliament, the elderly uh, council and the representative council, an executive government, and uh, uh, we reestablished law and order and the rule of law in the territory. And uh, our companies you know, came back, as I said, you know, previously uh, to, the, to the country. And uh, so a process of rebuilding you know, the whole area has taken place. Uh, today, uh, we are very proud, I would say, the Somalilanders in achieving this um, uh, progress and, uh, you know, re re I mean, reintegrating our people who are in Canada, in UK, in other European countries, in the United States of America, in Australia, to come back and to resettle in their former country. And this is what has been uh, successfully done by Somalilanders. Uh, then we, we, call, we start calling you know, for the independence, uh, for the recognition of the country from the international community. Uh, you know, by uh, establishing, as I said earlier, of course, the institutions, you know, the democratic institutions, uh, and um, uh, setting up a responsible, you know, government. And, um, you know, our people who are very hardworking, uh, you know, succeeded to have a reputation remarkable for the achievement, remarkable achievements in the country. Um, so here, uh, to make things, you know, short also, uh, I want to say that despite, you know, I'm talking under the subject of new states, uh, Somaliland existed as an old country, and Somalis, you know, all together, because uh, historically uh, we were part of the, for example, uh, uh, the Ottoman Empire at one stage, and before that, you know, we had trading links, you know, with uh, the pharaohs, you know, of Egypt who used to come to the Somali lands and uh, uh, to get, you know, the uh, aromatic, you know, materials which are so independent in the, in the country, like frankincense, like mire, uh, which they used to use, you know, for the, for the, uh, for the mummifying of the pharaohs. Uh, so S Somali land now uh, claims uh, self-determination. This was expressed, you know, in a, a referendum which the government of Somaliland organized in 2001. And in that referendum, uh, 90, more than 90 percent of the population uh, opted to, uh, uh, to, to proclaim, you know, the new, uh, new constitution and also separation reaffirmed the wish of the people to separate themselves, you know, from Somalia, which is still, as you know, is in a state of 
conflict and chaos. Um, uh, as far as the uh, you know, principle of uh, uh, self-determination is concerned, uh, the organization of African unity, uh, which uh, has preceded you know, the uh, African Union, uh, which exists now, uh, had always two systems of applying the principle of self-determination. Uh, number one was through the application of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution uh, 1514 of 1960, 1960 uh, regarding decolonization of the African uh, territories. Uh, the second point is, you know, the, through the application of uh, the principle of UT Posidis, which is the principle of international law uh, based on respect of uh, borders in, inherited from the colonial administration. Uh, this has been applied in a number of uh, voluntary post-independence unions which failed, you know, in Africa, like the uh, Arab, uh, United Arab Republic, Egypt and Syria, which united in 1958 and which broke up in 1961. And then you have the Mali Federation, Federation uh, which um, came into being in 1960 and then was dissolved after a few years. And then you have, you know, for example, the union between Senegal and uh, Gambia, which became a union in 1982 to 1989. Uh, these principles of self-determination were implemented also with regard to Bangladesh, to Singapore, to East Timor, to Eritrea, and to the former republics of uh, Yugoslavia, as you know. So our people are claiming from the point of view of international law that this system should be also applied, you know, to Somaliland. Uh, Somaliland also uh, uh, says that um, its present declaration of independence is based, as, as she was recognized earlier, uh, by, as a separate state by the international community. Because uh, if I go back a little bit to that uh, point, uh, when we became independent in 1960, from Britain, uh, a number of countries, uh, including you know, the five permanent members of the United Nations, uh, extended recognition you know, to Somaliland, as well as many countries in the European Union, Africa, and uh, Latin America. But uh, we rushed you know, to this uh, problem of uh, union you know, with Somalia, and we became part of Somalia. Now, uh, following you know, the failure of that union uh, and uh, the fact that Somaliland uh, today is an de facto independent uh, country, we want, to in we want the international community to recognize Somaliland as, a, as an independent uh, you know, country. Uh, so Somaliland has a legitimate claim uh, to independence and uh, because of also its admirable achievements uh, which is achieved, which are all attained on the basis of uh, uh, self-reliance. Uh, uh, as far as the reaction of the international community so far is concerned, uh, for example, with regard to Africa, uh, to the European, to the African Union, uh, they sent us a fact-finding mission in 2005. Uh, that finding, fact-finding mission concluded that um, Somaliland is, a unique, is in a unique position and her uh, claim to independence is legitimate. And as such, the Euro African countries, you know, should, be, should grant uh, full, in the, full recognition you know, to Somaliland. Unfortunately, these recommendations 
are not passed or implemented you know, by the Secretariat of the African Union. Uh, in addition to that, uh, for example, uh, we have support from some of the uh, European uh, political parties, like the European EU, uh, the European uh, Liberal Party, which is the third biggest party in the EU uh, parliament. Uh, and in their resolution at the end of 2007, they called on the member states of the EU governments, you know, to accord recognition, you know, to Somaliland. Uh, on top of that, uh, as a de facto independent country, uh, we are independent in running our uh, foreign policy. Uh, we have agreements of cooperation, for example, with a number of European countries, not only NGOs, but the governments. We have also um, uh, agreements with companies, uh, not oil, only oil, oil companies, but a number of oil of companies uh, with which you know, we deal uh, accordingly. And uh, the press has been, has been also, in some cases, uh, uh, realistic with the situation of uh, Somaliland and be writing you know, favorable uh, coverage about Somaliland. Uh, in addition, uh, we have uh, uh, other international organizations, you know, uh, like OMPO, like the international diplomats, like the crisis group, like, and, and other NGOs which support, you know, the independence of Somaliland. We have, for example, academicians, we have celebrities, we have prominent personalities, like some of the ex-presidents who visit Somaliland and who call on the international community to accord recognition, diplomatic recognition, you know, to Somaliland. Uh, in two, 2012, uh, the British government uh, convened a meeting uh, on Somalia. And uh, they invited a number of organizations, including, you know, the Secretary General of the United Nations, and also big countries, you know, European and American countries also took part, you know, in, in that meeting. And uh, together, I think there were about 50 uh, countries and organizations which attended that meeting in London at the end of February in 2012. And um, at that meeting, after that meeting, there was a communique which was adopted by the international community and which is agreed to establish a process of dialogue between Somalia and Somaliland. And um, so that, you know, they would establish orderly their future relations. And um, consequently, uh, Somaliland and Somalia started negotiations uh, through the mediation of the Turkish you know, government. And senior officials of the two governments met and the two presidents you know, signed a communique expressing their commitment to the dialogue. So Maryland is looking forward now to the continuation of this dialogue uh, which has been stopped you know, by Somalia. Because you know, we would like to uh, find a peaceful uh, solution you know, to this problem which exists between us and uh, Somalia. Uh, Somaliland believes say, as an independent and stable and successful democracy that she will be more capable to contribute to the peace, international peace and security in this region of Horn of Africa, which is a very sensitive region and where problems of piracy, problems of um, uh, extremism, and fundamentalism sometimes you know, take place. So Maryland is a moderate Muslim country and we would like you know, to uh, cooperate with the international community and we hope that when we get independence, uh, I mean recognition from the international community, we will be more capable to help also the other Somalis in the other areas, particularly you know, Somalia where there are still fighting going on. Uh, there they have a government which is recognized by the international community, 
but this government is sort of uh, superimposed on Somalia. And uh, I think this is one of the reasons where you have you know, the problems. In the case of Somaliland, as I said earlier, we have been more uh, self-reliant and uh, we tended to do things uh, through consultation, through the participation of the common people in, the, in re-establishing, rebuilding the country, and re-establishing uh, security and democracy in the territory. So in conclusion, uh, I want to say thank you very much. And uh, just one point, uh, if I may say so, sir, is uh, you see the, uh, how people are interested in, in helping you know, uh, these third world countries, especially the Europeans. Uh, problems are still reaching in Africa, in some places in Asia, as you have heard. And as some people said uh, many years ago, you know, the European NGOs are always the conscience of Europe. And we will rely also uh, more, not only on the governments and the parliaments, but also on people like you to help us solve you know, these problems. The question of sovereignty behind which some countries are hiding and oppressing you know, their people, I think should be uh, re-studied, should be studied again by the international community. And the participation, the concern which you have expressed, I think will be very important in future to rebuild a secure and an orderly uh, society in the international way. And then the point is uh, the role of international law. We have to strengthen the role of international law because now there is a tendency on big countries, you know, to put emphasis on security, on the, um, exploitation of economic resources and uh, ignoring, you know, the wishes of the people in different parts of the world. What frames the case of Somaliland in particular um, is a binary. Somaliland definitely enacts de facto statehood, but is denied de jure status because of its lack of recognition. But this binary of de facto and de jure can only really get us so far, perhaps. Through this lens, polities like Somaliland continue to be framed in the negative, by what they're not, by what they lack. They are non-states, they're unrecognized. In order to adopt perhaps a more positive framing, I wonder if it's useful um, to set questions of legality to one side and focus instead on legitimacy. The case that Muhammad Dar has set out so strongly is a case where there are strong claims to legitimacy. This is based on historical claims to the territory um, and through the everyday functioning of the Somaliland government, a democratic governance structure with a functioning economy um, and a welfare state. So my question is, to what extent can polities like Somaliland frame their claims more explicitly in terms of legitimacy? And does this open up space for engagement with external actors, be they states, international organizations, NGOs, um, that a focus on legality and recognition continually shuts down? Thank you. I think the, the, you know, the legitimacy of uh, Somaliland, uh, you know, for recognition is, uh, it's, you know, uh, as you said also, is its, you know, existence historically uh, as a separate state, uh, especially since the 19th century. And uh, also the, uh, its capability uh, to reconstruct itself after so much destruction and massacre of its you know, people and uh, to put in place a, a democratic structure, a democratic structure uh, which uh, adds to its limit legitimacy uh, to claim uh, recognition from the international community. Uh, we want uh, the international community to respect the democratic choice of the people of Somaliland, uh, who number more than, slightly more than four million people. Uh, and 
some of the problems, as you pointed out, for example, now we meet, is despite the fact on self-reliance on ourselves, uh, without getting much aid you know, from the international community, um, is the incapability on our part to get loans, for example, from the international uh, financial institutions like the World Bank, the IMF, you know, to uh, rebuild uh, development projects, for example, roads, bridges, the harbors, the uh, airports. Uh, now our people are collecting money. Even some of the girls are selling their necklaces, you know, to raise money. And it shows, you know, the commitment of the people, the, of the common people to help themselves to improve their lives and to uh, do something, whatever they can do to reconstruct roads, uh, the harbors, you know. And so I think we have uh, uh, the legitimacy is there, I would say, finally. Uh, and also, I think it will be good it, it, if the international powers, whether they are Europeans, uh, other Western countries, you know, would listen to the advice of the local people. You know, things are not like in the 19th century when Europeans were coming to Africa, there was so much uh, illiteracy. Now, most of these countries are literate, you know, societies. They know the problems and they know the solution of some of these problems. But some of the big countries will think, no, uh, you know, they may tend to ignore, you know, which is very unfortunate because if they listen to some of these problems, we can not only solve you know, the problem of Somaliland, but also the problem of Somalia and also other Somalis, you know, in, in, in our area. So I would say that uh, uh, I remember some of the uh, European authors, you know, which advocate that principle is, for example, uh, uh, David uh, uh, Basil Davidson, you know, uh, who has been writing a lot about, uh, about Africa and especially the past, uh, the past, the history of Africa. And uh, so you have a lot of prominent, you know, Europeans uh, who are acknowledgeable, you know, about uh, Africa and who know some of the problems which the governments tend to ignore.